Hi, this is Andrew Aversa, lead producer of Tokyo Scoring Strings. In this video, we'll be listening to a variety of articulations, dynamics, and vibrato types across all sections. We'll be focusing on the board mix patches here, since that is Mitsunori Aizawa's signature sound. But we'll also see what the library sounds like with some external reverb, as well as the mic mixer patches, where we can make our own mix from four different positions. Let's start off with Violins 1 and a little counterpoint from Violins 2. This will start forte and go down to pianissimo, making use of both senza vibrato and molto vibrato during the passage. Next, we'll hear violins 1 playing spiccato and violins 2 playing spiccato seco, or crisp spiccato. Then the section after that will feature violins 1 playing spiccato seco and violins 2 playing staccatissimo. Here are both violin sections playing in unison, starting from a quiet dynamic and then playing mezzo forte through most of it. We'll keep an eye on the vibrato level throughout. Now let's try adding the violas an octave below with the same MIDI data otherwise. We'll also check it out with some external reverb. First, 7th Heaven for a Bercasti M7 style reverb, and then the Lexicon Random Hall preset. A feature worth noting for your soaring legato parts is the extra legato bow in the advanced section. When enabled, this adds a velocity-sensitive spiccato overlay to legato transitions. The timing adjusts automatically based on when the destination note comes in. We'll listen first without the extra bow, and then with. Now is a good time to take a very quick look at our groundbreaking new Look Ahead playback mode. This is so important that it will get its own entire video, but we can still preview it here. When Look Ahead mode is active and you hit the play button in your DAW, playback will be significantly delayed. However, in exchange, the playback engine will intelligently handle things like legato transitions, timing, attack offsets, and even articulation switching based on note length and context. Here's a simple example with a sequenced violin part and no automation in standard mode. Because none of the notes overlapped, there was no legato, so it didn't sound as realistic as possible. If I wanted to write legato with the slow profile, normally I'd have to nudge notes around to anticipate transitions. But now let's turn on look ahead mode. It takes my sequencing and even though everything is snapped to the grid, it times everything correctly, uses legato and overall just sounds better. Be sure to check out the dedicated look ahead mode video, which will release sometime after this one, where we'll talk about how to fit this in the context of a whole project. Lastly, for violins, we'll use the very emotional sforzando long and short articulations for violins 1 and decrescendo long and short for violins 2.
Moving on to violas, here's a melodic part with some nice dynamic movement. This section, using decrescendo long and short, might sound familiar. While fast arpeggios usually call for a spiccato, you can try using staccato instead, and you'll hear some staccatissimo at the end. Finally, some legato arpeggios. A lot of users are saying that the violas really sing the most out of all the sections, and while it's hard to pick favorites, they do sound really nice. This part will be at max dynamic, fortissimo, so I'll put the vibrato automation up on the screen. The cello section is very capable of playing its own legato melody. This uses both regular and molto vibrato. In terms of shorts, having just three cellos in this very focused studio space allows you to get pretty energetic. And for this last legato scale, I'll swell from piano to fortissimo and senza vibrato to molto vibrato. Listen to the ending pattern where I'm using the attack overlay feature to play some quick short notes without changing articulations or key switches. The volume of the short note overlay is based on velocity. I'll use that same technique for this contrabass part. The only articulation used is arco, or sustain, but the spiccato overlay lets me play very nimbly. Here's how spiccato seco sounds with these mighty instruments. Compare that to staccatos. This final melodic part uses a mix of dynamics and vibrato levels. Here's a passage using all the sections playing at the same time in poly legato mode so that the violins can play multiple notes at the same time and the violas too for a bit. In this mode, you don't need to overlap notes to trigger legato. They will automatically trigger if playing within the legato latency window when you release them. I'm using 7th Heaven reverb here to pull it all together. We can also check out this same part, but this time with our consordino or muted toggle enabled for an even more buttery tone. Okay, so 
So now let's check out the mic mixer and go through the mics one by one. It's very important to note that these patches can take up much more CPU and memory because each mic position multiplies the number of voices and samples loaded. Using all four mics takes four times the CPU and memory as the same board mix patch. So if there are articulations you're not using, it's a good idea to turn them off and save RAM. First, here's the close mic position. This uses multiple spot mics for the driest and tightest overall sound in the library. Then there's the standard Deca tree, which is three mics in the left, center, right configuration above the ensemble, offering a bit more air overall. The room position features four mics placed approximately in a square around the ensemble, two in the back and two outriggers, giving a nice stereo image and ambience. And finally, the surround position is a pair of mics placed opposite each other at some distance. Notice that none of these have a really long reverb tail. This isn't surprising considering the space, but it is different than the typical close stage far setup that other orchestral libraries have. The non-close mics do have additional stereo image and spaciousness, but it isn't overbearing. That's why it's still a good idea to use some reverb on top of the strings for a traditional orchestral mock-up. If you're going for a pop or rock sound, you might just use the board mix or close mics dry. Before I wrap up, I'll load up the staccatissimo articulation with Violins 1 and experiment with the mix a bit there. I hope you enjoyed this sonic overview of Tokyo scoring strings. Of course, with over 280,000 samples, there's no way to demonstrate everything this library can do, but this should give you an idea of the range, depth, and expression possible with this incredible tool. This has been Andrew Aversa, and I'll see you next time.